So welcome everyone today to Psalms Through the Eyes of the Living Letters. And today we're going to be going over Psalms chapter 119, verses 9 through 16 specifically. Now we have, uh, we went through uh, 1 through 8 last week, which is in the, in the Psalms 119, what you've got is a beautiful expression of each one of the 22 Hebrew living letters. And I love that because, you know, one of the things that we learned last week was that there's eight verses in each and every one of these particular uh, groups. And we're going to go through every, tw uh, you know, all 22 of them. So we're going to be doing this for a little while. And uh, I love what the Hebrew perspective is here because the eight verses that comprise every single one of each one of these Hebrew living letters is known as the eight facets. Now, those of you that have been around, you you know, because you've heard me talk about the diamond of Yahweh. And we've talked about how the diamond of Yahweh is a reflection of each and every one of us. But at the same time, we too are multifaceted. And so Father's begun to open up another perspective of those facets of, of, of who we are in him and who he is in us. So just wanted to give a quick reminder of, of what we talked about last week, because it really builds one upon the next. I love that because even when Father took me through the Hebrew living letters themselves, he began to teach me how each letter began to open up a new aspect, uh, another depth, another another place of, of, uh, of beauty and of understanding, not only of who he is, but of who I am. And that's what really got me the, the most was that... Uh, that as I tried to find and find him more, the more that I looked for him, the more that he kept turning around and taking those living letters and saying, wait, these letters refer to you as well. And he began to show me who I am in the midst of, of those letters. And it's brought about a just a just a beautiful place of, of connection. And probably the one thing that that I have noticed more than anything else, it's been two words, trust and confidence that has been built. And that's that's the heart behind what we're doing in going through each one of these living letters here with uh, Psalm 119. So charisma, it's good to see you uh, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and read, the, read Psalm 119 verses 9 through 16, and then we're going to start digging into this. Verse 9 says this. Now, Sorry, I don't mean to stop all of a sudden, get ready to start and then stop all of a sudden. But for those of you that are new, you're going to notice that this is not going to be the same as your King James Version. Uh, I'm reading out of the Tehillim. The Tehillim is a Hebrew uh, interlinear book that, that, that has the original Hebrew and the English, one on top of the other. And uh, it's called the Art Scroll Series Schottenstein Edition. If you ask me a little bit later, I'll pop a link, some links up in the uh, chat that will give you... Uh, the 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 place where you can get a hold of the Tehillim, but this is a, a literal translation from the original Hebrew into English. So you're going to notice there's a difference. So verse nine starts off and says this: How can a youngster purify his path? I remember years ago somebody giving me this scripture, and it really helped me a lot. How can a youngster purify his path by observing your word? With all my heart I sought you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. In my heart, I have stored your word so that I would not sin against you. Blessed are you. God, teach me your statues. With my lips, I recounted all the ordinances of your mouth. I rejoiced over the way of your ennobling testimonies. I'm going to come back to that one here in just a little bit. One of the, if you, you know, if you guys want to know when I say the father's been messing with me about something, this, usually it's a word or two that's inside the scriptures that really begin to just jump out at me. And that's the spot where the father has really messed with me over the last, over the last week. I rejoiced over the way of your ennobling testimonies as much as in all riches. Of your precepts, I speak and I look at your paths. I occupy myself with your statutes. I will not forget your word. Now, I love this because I remember not too terribly long ago, I was speaking with a, 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 young, a young man specifically, 
And, and I was, we were having a conversation with regards to just a, a lot of stuff. And right in the middle of the conversation, he began to, 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 to just bear his heart and say that he was dealing with some things that really most guys deal with when it comes to, uh, when it comes to these things. And I remember that, that, that for me in my life, as I was growing up, there was that period of time where, where there was a lot of difficult, there was a lot of stuff going on in my mind. Now, you ladies, I'm sure, you know, you will, you be able to, to, ver- to say that you probably dealt with some things, but from maybe, maybe another perspective, maybe not. I, I really don't know. I can only speak being a, being a, a guy here with regards to this. Uh, but knowing that that you know, of course, having been married for thirty seven years now, my wife and I, you know, I've I've heard some of the things that she struggles with, and they're definitely a little bit different than what guys struggle with. But yet, it's still that place of really growing and learning. And I remember when this person gave me this this word years ago, and they were talking about how can a young man keep his way pure? I believe is what it says in the King James version. And and the and it goes on to say by doing by observing your word, by hearing your word. Now, this can sometimes be a very difficult thing to do, especially when you're young. You know, you there's so many thoughts that are going on, so many crazy things that you see and think, and so on. Uh, things that you want to do, things that you want to accomplish, and that sort of thing, and and yet. There's this this battle of of inside of your heart, knowing and sensing that there is something more in your life, that there's there's a depth to to what the Father has given you inside of your heart. And there was a time that that I would say that that I could I could regret some things that I had did I had done, or regret some things that I had been through, or processes that I had had uh, had walked through, and that sort of thing. But it's funny how the older I get, the more I'm thankful for, if you will, the process that the Father took me through. Because he protected me, he covered me, he walked me through those those, those things, those issues. And I know this goes, this is not just a, a, a guy conversation that I'm having right now. I think this is true. This is true of all of us. We can all see and go back and look and and realize that the Father walked us through these places. And it's through that time, through that place that the Father is, you know, began to say, hey, uh, I know who you really are. And matter of fact, when you gave your life to me, I saw you in your completed work. And every time I look at you, I see you in that completed work. I see you in that finished work. Now, sometimes as a, as a young person, that's hard to, to say, oh, really? You know, you really see the, the depth of who I am, but the father walks us through these processes to do what? To mature us, to allow us the opportunity to grow, to allow us the opportunity to be able to, to trust him in all things. Didn't really plan on talking about that, but (laughs) it's just something that's been stirring in my spirit, man, as I was as I was meditating uh, on this. He says, with all my heart, verse uh, verse 10, with all my heart, I sought you. You do not let me stray from your commandments. You know. uh, I'm just, I'm remembering a story in this and uh, seeing if Holy Spirit wants me to go ahead and, and I, rec- I, well, yeah, I feel right about it. Um, I remember back, this has been several years, many years ago, but I was going through a very, very rough time. And I, I started to hit that that magic age of the late 40s and early 50s. You know, I was I was I was I had I hadn't quite hit 50 yet, but for me that 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 transition between 40 into 50 was was a little bit of a, a difficult time. <laughs> Those of you that are over 50, you kind of know what I'm talking about a little bit. Those of you that are under 50, well, 
it, it may or may not be like that for you. Some, some, it, it doesn't have to be. It, I just know that it was for me, especially since I started to look at my life and I began to realize, wait a minute, I'm not where I want to be. But there was one thing that that happened during the during the midst of that of that cry because I remember one day going before the Lord and and sitting in a quiet place and sitting sitting with Him and I began to cry and I began to pour out my heart and I said something that that when I look back on it I was like whoa okay it was a little bit bold <laughs> but in the same breath it was exactly what I meant. And what I began to cry out was this. I said, Father, you know, it doesn't matter if you never talk to me ever again. It doesn't matter if you never do anything for me ever again. Those things are not what I'm really searching after. As a matter of fact, if 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 I have disqualified myself through whatever and however throughout my life, then then just let me live the rest of my life and and I will I will just I I will maintain this place of where I am right now because uh, I know that 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 maybe the things that I thought and the dreams that I had, I had hoped for aren't going to come to pass. And as I began to 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 cry out in this way, I said, "But there's one thing, Father. This is what I ended that statement with. There is one thing, Father, that I will not stop doing because there's one thing that I know that you have shown me throughout all of my life." And, and I'm going to maintain that. And that is the fact that I know that you are my God, and I will never stop seeing you as my God. I will never stop, even if I've disqual even if I've done whatever that I'm not going to stop calling you. I will praise your name until my dying breath, as I move from that place of leaving this earth and then coming together with you. And at that time, that's, that's the way that I saw things. And I remember the father when he when he spoke that when I spoke that word to him, I got really silent. I began to just sob uh, uncontrollably. And after I got to a point where the sobbing began to die down just a little bit, I heard the father say this one thing, and that was beyond hope, in hope Abraham believed. And that's what he told me. That's just that, just that statement. Beyond hope. Uh, Abraham believed. And I knew what the rest of the story was because Abraham was crying out for a son and the father had promised him a son. And, but beyond hope, Abraham still believed that the word of God was still true and was yes and amen. And when he said that, I realized that, that the father was telling me, your promises are not void. They're not uh, you've not lost them. They are still there. I, I've still established you for such a time as this. And there began to be now a new sobbing that, that kind of began to came over, become over me because I began to realize that, wait a minute, the promises of the Father were still yes and amen in my life and that I could continue to, to, to keep going. I didn't have to... Uh, I didn't have to forfeit the promises that he had made when I was when I was a young man. And one of the key promises was always that of that one day I would be in ministry. And uh, from the time I was 12 years old, I believed that. And here I was creeping up on 50 and still wasn't wasn't in that place because I wanted to do I wanted to walk into ministry in the place and the time that was right. And the father took me through that. So I know that may be for somebody because, because many people have gone through, through situations where, where they feel like the, the things in the past have, have kept them from, from getting, the, getting to the promises of God. But let me remind you that the promises of Yahweh are still yes and amen. The promises of the father are still true even now. But there's one thing that I begin to learn as, as Father began to take me into the Hebrew Living Letters that I didn't learn before. To me, it, it seemed like I, I maybe it was just the way I was being taught or the way I understood it. So I'm going to blame all this on the way that I understood I understood things, that I just needed to wait for God, that, that, that 
that it was all God's responsibility and he needed to take care of this and he needed to take care of that. And I was waiting on him. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You remember that old scripture? All, and there were other scriptures that began to, 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 to lean towards that perspective of just letting the father do what he needed to do. And don't get me wrong. Please do not get me wrong. The father always gives. And yes, he does want to give to us. But is there a responsibility that we have? And the answer is yes. There is absolutely a responsibility that we, I mean, come on. When, when you know, when you look at a, a, a when you look at a rich man's chill, child, Let's just let's I don't want to use any one particular person uh, for an example. But when when you're when you're looking at it from a very Babylonian system and and a worldly system and you look at a, a rich man's child, everything is provided for that child. Matter of fact, usually in some cases, not in all cases, but in some, the child is given everything they ever want. They never had to struggle for anything. All they had to do was ask mom or dad, say, hey, I need this. And boom, it was given to me, even up to, you know, some some very expensive things. And the parents would would take care of them. But the child never uh, never had to 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 do anything, never had to have any responsibility for that. We know the stories. We've seen them both on on Hollywood as well as as well as in real life, where you've seen that these these kind of spoiled rotten kids get to the point where then they feel like that everything should be just given to them. It's an entitlement uh, mentality. I don't know. But the Father has placed in us a place of responsibility. He's given us an opportunity for responsibility. Why? Because it begins to teach us who we really are in him. It begins to allow us to realize that he has made us to be kings and priests in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. We have an authority that he has given us. And just as the scripture says that when a child is young, he is under tutors and, and governors until a time appointed of the father, though he be Lord over all. In other words, it's like a young prince who's being who's given the opportunity to be under tutors and governors. Why? To teach them that place of responsibility. So when the time comes that that the fullness of the kingdom is released, the fullness of the authority is released in their lives, they have the ability to be able to maturely handle the the uh, the, the 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 prosperity the I, I don't want to just get wrapped up in just prosperity but but the the fullness of everything that the father wants to do through that person yes that has to do with prosperity but it also has to do with maturity it also has to do with with uh of mercy and 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 grace it also has to do with uh several other several other terms i don't i don't have time to get into i'm i'm thinking of chesed which is mercy i'm thinking of gavura which is might uh, I'm thinking of Netzach, which is this place of, of, of learning how to be able to divvy something up. Hod, which is a, an expression in Hebrew that speaks about making sure that it gets to the right person. So uh, the, the, two, the two aspects of, of how these each one of these begin to work together into disseminating and allowing each and every one of us to be kings and priests in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. You see, the focus that what the Father has been taking me into with, with, this, with this word today, and I'm getting to it here in just a, a few moments, has to do with that part right there. That place of growing this up and teaching us about who we really are in him, and then beginning to rule and reign and operate in that place. All right, so let me keep going. Let me keep going. In my heart, I have stored your word. Now, I love this because with that word stored there, you know, uh, I believe this was Rashi that, that said this, but there's uh, 
there's a note in the Tehillim here. It says, I have stored mere knowledge of the Torah or of Torah is not enough, or mere knowledge of the scriptures is not enough. Its words must be meditated upon and kept in the forefront of one's mind. Only in this way will they produce the salutary effect of refining one's character and conduct and bringing him closer to God. So it's in other words, it's the place of not only just hearing the word, if you will, but it's that place of, of sitting down and really digging into the word. You see, bait, when we look at the living letter bait itself, one of its uh one of its if you will one of its more literal translations of the living letter bait is house uh or home so it gives the place of of the perspective of living in a place where there's a group of people living together and it's a family ones that are that are joined together in a way where they they their family you got your mother your father your sisters your brothers and so on and of course you know all of us know having families ourselves that the the process of growing up inside of a family and and then of course beginning to have families of our own as we as we get to that place of of marriage and and having children and so on and and all the dynamics that go along with that there's one thing that 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 he, at least here in the south that that I love because you know when 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 it comes to uh, when it comes to families, sometimes you'll you'll walk up on a on a situation in a in a family, and sometimes there'll be two people that are arguing back and forth about something there, and they're fire and mad. At least here in the South, this is this is kind of a a, a funny thing that you see a lot. You know, the fire and mad at one at one another, and and arguing, but don't be don't be in the place. Don't ever find yourself when you're not a part of that immediate family. And try to walk up and try to calm things down between the two that are arguing back and forth because uh, or try to to stop something because, <laughs> you know, they may fight in and up amongst themselves, but don't you come in and try to to say anything about it. Why? Because the whole family will be jumping you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, and it's it's kind of a anyway. You know what I'm talking about, because in other words, it's that place where where we struggle back and forth in in learning uh, from each other and 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 really learning how to honor one another, even in the midst of of close family. And of course, family's got that added dynamic of the fact that we live with one another. <laughs> And uh, you know, I know, I know those of you that have been, those of you that have gotten married, then you know what I'm talking about. There's a big difference between when you're dating your your wife or your husband, and then when you actually move in together. <laughs> there's a there's a big difference because suddenly all the little things that you didn't know that they did are now on full display, and you begin to know the intimate sides. I mean, the deep intimate sides of of one another. Well, see, really, if you can go there. That's an expression of the living letter bait. It's talking about that place of family and that place of, of being able to, if you will, expose those things inside of ourselves that are that are very intimate, but uh, uh, and 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 then have be able to deal with those with with one another. Because there's a group of people that you know love you. There's a family that you know that is a part of you and and, and loves you. And so this place where it says that in my heart I have stored your word, bait in that place of 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 storing this place. Of course, a house is a place where you begin to to put your experiences together and you begin to understand. And I love this because bait to me, from the Hebrew perspective, has a sense of what's called duality, not not a dichotomy. But duality. Dichotomy says that things are two polar opposites. They're they're you know like if you will the north and the south pole of a magnet are are usually referred to as di uh, dichotomous because they you can't you can't they they can't be the same thing because you try to put the two together and they will they will immediately begin to. Uh, attract one another because you got the north and south but you try to put two south poles together and of course they're going to repel you try to put two north poles together and they're going to to repel but when you stop to look at the whole idea behind a magnet you begin to see that there is a single magnet that has two perspectives two ways of looking at things 
two parts of it that actually make a whole. I love the, the probably the best uh, analogy that I've ever that I've ever used, and I use it all the time in our classes, and that is that of a coin, right? You know, if I if I was to bring up put up a coin between us, we could argue indefinitely as to whether it's heads or tails, depending upon which side that you see. Until we come to the place where we agree that it is a single coin, we'll always be arguing, and both will be right. Now that's that's that that's getting a little bit deep there, but I hope you kind of get let Holy Spirit begin to take you a little bit deeper into into the aspect of that because that gets really really deep. The two aspects really work together. Many times, sometimes you know, many times it's it's from one direction. It's leading us into an understanding and a depth. It carries us through to allows us an opportunity to mature. The other one confirms that. Or, or it begins to show us the depth of the authority that we have. I hope, I hope you guys are good here. I know I'm getting a little bit deep. But I love this because in that place where I have stored your word, there's a confidence that begins to build inside of this place of my communion with the Father. Does that make sense? My, my connection with the Father, that one-on-one -on -one time with the Father. There's a picture behind me that, that many of you have talked about before, but right over here, and it was uh, painted by a guy by the name of David Raymer, and he called it the witness, but I immediately renamed it when uh, when I got it from him and call it the, the universe of two, because this to me is a beautiful picture of the secret place, the place where it's just the father and I. The place where nothing else exists in that place except him and I. And I love that place of the secret place. And I love the fact that when he told me that day that the secret place was inside of me, that I knew that I never, ever had to leave that place of the secret place. Even though I was in the middle of, of working, like Lamar, you know, is in the middle of working right now. You know, and others of you may be in the middle of, I've got some, I've got, got some things going on and so on. But I know Lamar said that he was going to be listening and, and was working. And, and, and there you go. But there's a beautiful place where we can do both. We can, we can be both working on something and yet still having our heart and our ear inclined to the word of the Lord. And in the midst of that, having that, if you will, that prayerful attitude. I love this because when the Father began to show me this, I began to realize when Paul was talking about praying without ceasing, it made more sense to me. I began to realize that this prayer without ceasing was this constant communication, this constant leaning my ear into, this constant place of not letting go of, if you will, that connection that I knew that I had. Now, I, the only way that I can really describe it for me is that it's a sense or a feeling, and I, I use that peace. Now, to me, there's a, there's a word for that sense or that feeling, and it's peace. It's shalom. It's the peace that passes all understanding. And once I tasted that peace and I knew what that peace was, it was like, I will not let go of this peace. Because now that I know what it feels like, now that I know what it, if you will, tastes like, or in other words, the, the sense that I can feel inside of me, I can hold on to this peace even in the midst of what appears to be a turmoil. And that started making sense to me too, when I thought about Yeshua being asleep in the middle of the boat when the, when the storm was raging out on the water. Why? Because he was in this place of, of grabbing a hold of that peace inside of his heart and not letting go. And he was trying to teach the disciples, or the father along with Yeshua was trying to teach the disciples, hey, did he not say in the middle of that when they woke him up, oh, ye of little faith? Haven't I, how long have I been with you? How, how much have I already taught you? This peace is already inside of you. You can rest in this place of the peace, knowing that, that even in the midst of this, this horrendous storm, you're still good. So you see that place where in my heart I have stored your word that I, have, I, could, I would not sin against you starts to make more sense. Because I've taken your word, I've began to, 
to see. I began to look at it. I began to spend time. I began to get intimate with your word and look into the depths. How, you know, for me, when I, when I begin to, to do, when I begin to study, I begin to look into the, to a lot of different perspectives. I'll look at, at how I would feel like if, if from the perspectives of, of things that I had already gone, gone through. And then many times the Lord would bring up other situations that I had not gone through. And I would look at it from those perspectives as, as well. And so it, it began to, to give me an opportunity to, to, to really just get that word inside of my spirit, to, to, to gain the place of trust, trusting in the Lord, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Well, those, that walking on the path first requires trust, but trust will always build confidence. And in that place of confidence, then we know that place of walking. And that's what he's talking about here, where he's talking about storing your word, that I will not sin against you. Blessed are you, Adonai. Blessed are you, God. Teach me your statutes. Teach me those things that, that, that you need for me to learn. Now, many times the word statutes in Hebrew is the same as commandments. They're synonyms of one another. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I'm not, no, uh, they're usually synonyms. The synonyms that go along with uh, with that word, uh, uh, the commandments. In other words, it's the place of of the loving instruction of the Father. See, I don't see commandments in the way that some people see them. You know, I know that that from a Christian perspective, we've seen them as as being a part of of the law and and we've seen the negative aspects of the religious aspect of the law itself but what was the intention of the father i'm going to go a little bit deep here okay what was the intention of the father from the beginning if you go back and look into exodus chapter 18 you're going to begin to just discover it's not an overt pattern. It's not something that just screams out and says, boom, this is what's going on. But it is very definitely a part of what was happening in Exodus 18 uh, and 19 and on into 20 is actually. The, the, the father takes them into the place where he takes them to Sinai. And, and he the first thing that he does when they get to the, the valley of, of Sinai or Sinai he takes them in there and he says, Moshe goes up on the, on the mountain and he says, I want you to go back down and I want you to ask the, 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 the men of Israel a question. I want to bring you into a place with me. I want to bring you into this place of bait, into this place of union, into this place of common union, communion together with me. And in this place of this communion, you know, uh, there's there's going to be there's going to be a, if you will, uh, some instruction that goes along with it. Or if you can go there, if you can go there, what the father was doing with Moshe on the mountain was, I want you to go back to the, the, the people of Israel and ask them, will you marry me? You see, in Exodus 19, that that place where Moshe goes on the mountain was really the expression of the father uh inviting or asking the people of israel to marry him and and as a result there was a ketubah that began to be formed as a result of that now what does that mean the ketubah is the marriage contract from the hebrew perspective and in a ketubah is a place where there are some uh there's some things written down some if you will some expectations from both sides that are written on this marriage contract and, and as they do, the two agree to them together and they sign this contract and then they come together and they consummate the marriage uh, after that point. And, and the father does the same thing. As a matter of fact, he gives them the, the ultimate expression of what he's trying to do. He's saying, I want to bring you in. I want you to be united with you. I want you to be one with me. And I will make you a peculiar nation amongst all the other nations. All the nations will come to you. Why? Because they see our union. We, they see this place of, of who we are. Now, believe it or not, this, this, this expression of this began with Moshe. 
Because Moshe, when he met with the father at the burning bush, and from that point forward, one of the testimonies that Moshe had was that he uh, uh, he was known to be a friend of God. In other words, he talked to, to Adonai as one friend talks to the other. There were no secrets. There were no mysteries. There were no riddles. They spoke plainly in front of one another. Adonai himself, Yahweh himself, was speaking to Moshe, and without riddles or without mysteries or without anything, it was just plain and simple communion. And the father wanted that same relationship with the people of Israel so that he could speak with them one on one. That depth of relationship where he, he could just pour out, if you will, all of his heart. And so the, the first thing that he had to do was to bring about this place of union. And, and, and that's what he cried out to do. But there was a process that began to happen. And in, in the middle of the process, they, as they were walking through, there was very specific things. I don't have time to get into it right now, but there was very specific things that, that they needed to do in order to get ready for this, this, this marriage, if you will, this, this, this place of the union of the two of them. And right in the middle of this, Suddenly, because of the of the things that were happening, when 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 the father began to speak to the people of Israel, they got scared. And 10 of the tribes said, you know what? Listen, we cannot handle this. Matter of fact, Moses, why don't you go before God and you speak to him? Because we cannot handle all these words that are going forth. This is what's known as the 10, utter, 10 utterances. Now we know them as the Ten Commandments, or or at least from the from the religious aspect, that's what they've always been. Uh, been called, but from the the Hebrew perspective, they're known as the ten words or the ten utterances, and they were very specific words that were spoke to the people of Israel. But every time, and I heard this from a from a Jewish guy. Now you guys know that I, I have I was not born and raised in a Jewish family, but Father has opened up a very deep Hebraic. Uh, perspective to me that I never expected. I it was it was almost as if he opened up my mind and my heart and he began to pour in some understanding. But the truth is is that each one of us have that place and that ability to be able to to do. The Father has given us something that 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 we are meant to do because we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all part where where each one of each part has a part to play and each part is important. Each one of us are kings. And so if each, each one of us are kings, then there's authority that we have that the Father has given us for us to be able to rule and reign over. And the beauty of this is that we, so often we get so wrapped up in, in a bunch of junk that, that, uh, that, that leads us on this thing of thinking somebody's getting more than we are and blah, 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 blah. I've got a father's given me a beautiful teaching about the parable of the talents that that I have I've only released in a few small spots and 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 looking forward to getting an opportunity to really be able to express another perspective of the parable of the talents than you've ever heard before. And and to me, it begins to make more sense. Now, I'm not denying the other part. There's a perspective where that part is true. But then there's another way of looking at this, and that is the fact that the Father has given each one of us this, this, this ability to be able to do the things that he's called us to do, but not just do, but for us to be who we're always meant to be. You guys know, uh, Marsha, I know that, that those of you that have been with me for any length of time know that I, I, I hate getting wrapped up in, in everything being this idea about doing something, right? It's not about us doing anything. It's about us being something, about us being sons, about us loving the Father. I Yes, I want to do things for the Lord. Yes, I need to do things for the Lord. Why? Well, not because I have to, not because it's a requirement, not because I'm told that in order for me to make it to heaven, that's what I need to do. I want to do it because I love him. And I want to do it because I'm I'm like, that's the heart. That's the expression of, of what's inside of me is, is, Father, let me just show my love back to you. Let me do, let me have an opportunity to do what I know that you always do. And I know you always give. So, Father, let me give back to you. Let me give back to you as I give my love to you. But let me give back to you as I give my love to you to the you that is in each and every one 
of us. You get this. The Father, the Father has a beautiful expression inside of you that, 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 is, that, is, that is to be honored. There is, a, there is a protocol as I approach. I've asked this before. And some of you may have even heard me say this before, but that's okay. I'm going to say it again. For those of you that are new and for those of you that are listening on YouTube, there's a, there's a place where the Father has taken me where he's begun to say, wait a minute, if you are an expression of the Father, and you are a unique expression of the Father that is uniquely you, then as I approach you, should I not then approach you with the same honor and protocol that I would approach the Father in? Stop and think about that just a minute. Should I not approach you in that same honor and protocol if you are an expression of him just as much as I am. Interesting. So in that place, blessed are you, God, teach me your statutes. With my, list, with my lips, I recounted all the ordinances of your mouth. I rejoiced over the way of your ennobling testimonies. Now, this is the one that I really wanted to get to. This place of the ennobling testimonies. You see, when I first read this, when you read it in the uh, when you read it in the King James, it has a slightly different perspective, uh, or, or it, it re reads it a different way. But that word ennobling literally means to, if you will, walk through a process or understand something to help make you become more like a king or a queen. That's the word. In other words, it's a process of teaching you nobility. That makes sense? The process of teaching you nobility. And I know in the, in the, the scriptures there, it begins with talking about this place of the, the path. I rejoiced over the way. That Hebrew word there for the over the way is the Hebrew word. Uh, actually, in the original Hebrew, it's uh, baderech and uh, or derech. Now, those of you that have uh, know a little bit of Hebrew, derech is usually the Hebrew word for walk. But more specifically, it's been translated more often than walk into the word paths. So the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And of course, that alludes to the place of path. But there's a, what's the other, what's the other scripture? Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path, your direct. I love that because that Hebrew word direct there is it starts with a dalit, resh, and a chet. Excuse me, dalit, resh, and a cough, not a chet. I'm sorry. In uh, in Hebrew, uh, uh, the the sound that you hear sometimes uh, is not only just the living letter chet that uses that particular sound. Uh, a cough when it is in a final position, or like like this word is this is cough final or cough so feet. It also has that. Ch sound that goes along with it. So it's Dalit Resh Kof Sofit. Dalit, of course, the, the letter of a door, the letter of a portal, the way, the place of us moving from one place to another. In other words, I, I, I like, I love the word door here, but I don't want to stick Dalit into just being the perspective of just being a door. I don't want to get real too religious on, on that aspect of it. But it's uh because there's there's so many more perspectives, but for right now, this is what this has to. I, I'm going to have to go with this perspective on this. Uh, Dalit is a door, or an opening, so it's an opening into what the resh. Resh is a letter that speaks of of if you will, top, head, the most important, uh, high priority, if you will, the beginning of something like a uh, Rosh Hashanah's being the beginning of the year or the head of the new year. But resh has an even deeper perspective to it, because Resh also speaks about the place of being separated unto holiness. 
it speaks of this place of of if you will being changed into or or operating in this place of of becoming holy now you know we talk i talk about righteousness and holiness all the time uh righteousness is given to us through the blood of yeshua and and it's righteousness is not something that we have to earn it's something that the father has given us through the blood of yeshua and his righteousness we we stand in the fullness of his righteousness the moment that we asked yeshua into our hearts we became fully righteous in him however holiness to me is a process because the scripture goes on to say that be ye holy as i am holy and so there's a process of walking through this place of of holiness uh i don't think it's i don't think it's a it's a mistake that zadi kuf and resh are uh, are the three letters that are towards the end of the hebrew and they're all connected together because each one of those talk about this process or journey zadi which which means righteousness uh or you know zadik which is uh zadi is the letter zadik is a righteous one Zadikim is a a righteous ones. So if you if I'm a Zadik, then each one of us are the Zadikim. We are righteous ones in in the Father. But Kuf begins to open up the 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 portal, if you will, or the door of the understanding of of this place of the process of walking in holiness. And Resh takes us in it fully. And so this direct talks about the door into being separated unto holiness. Now, cough, cough means the palm of the hand. And, and so when I see cough final or cough so feet specifically, I see this place of if the palm of the hand is cough, and one of the expressions of the way that I see that is what we do with our hands, okay? Or what the father does with his hands, two ways, both ways we can look at it from. And, and so in the fact that the father used his hands and he formed us into his likeness and into his image and he made us the 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 express image of his glory he 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 basically was saying here behold and see what i have made see i've made you and and he's given us that fact that we are also made in his like we are we are made in his likeness and image and so we too have the opportunity where we can form and make something and say back to the father see Look what I have made you. Behold, and cough has the has a beautiful expression of 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 that word behold. But to me, when I see cough so feet or cough final specifically, I see this place of, if you will, the the fullness of it, the fulfillment of it, the finished or completed work of what the Father had intended for us to be. So when it says, I rejoiced over the path, over the way, the father is saying, I've given you through my word, this portal where you can be separated at holiness to be the fullness and the fulfillment of what I have made for you to be. And this way takes you into the ennobling testimonies. Now, this is a really cool part of this. And I'm going to wrap it up with this. I'm going, to, I'm going to finish out the rest of this, but I'm going to wrap it up with this specifically. There's a, there's a neat little mystery that's hidden here in the Hebrew word for, the, for ennobling testimonies. And in Hebrew, it's pronounced edvotecha. Edvotecha. And it's ayin, dalit, vav, tet, yod, and kof, final, or kof, sofit. And when you break this down, it's the, the Hebrew word for uh, the Aleph Dalit is, is actually, that's, that's the root where this word is found here, is witness, evidence, or testimony. Now, for me, I see that in the place of, you know, you know the way we kind of see it in the, in the nowadays is, is when I say about a witness or evidence of something, I'm looking at the place of the tangible evidence. Uh, Apostle Aaron Smith, one of the things that he talks about, and he's taught for years, has been about that place of, of if you will, um, the tangible evidence in the earth. So as I walk in the paths that the Father has taken me through, 
I begin to see this place where it, it begins to build a confidence in me. I know what his word is for my life. And I begin to walk in this path because I know the there's the Holy Spirit is there inside of me. And it the, the Holy Spirit, not he, he, she, the Holy Spirit begins to walk me in that path of, of being able to to sense, to feel, and to know the heart of the Father. In other words, to me, the the, the power of Holy Spirit begins to, to enable me to, to be even more sensitive to the heart of my Father. And of course, you know, my, my sheep know my voice, if you will, is what the, the scripture says about this. But the truth is, is that when we lived in the we, when we live in the place of being in the heart of the Father, we begin to know the sound of his heart. We begin to, to sense and to feel the expression of his heart. You know, to me, Psalm 91 is a, a perfect example of this. He who sits, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That word shadow is the word that, that speaks about to me the shadow of his heart. That's what I see when I see that word, is the shadow of his heart. In other words, it's me living inside of him, in his, inside of his heart, and sensing and feeling, not only knowing his word, because he's given me his word, and he's given me the, the, the place of being able to see through Holy Spirit the, the perspectives of the intent of his heart. And I begin to understand his will, his word, and his ways. And in that path, in that path of, of understanding that, it begins to build a confidence in me that I know the path that I'm to take. Why? Because I know the peace. I understand the peace. You see, this whole particular uh, part today has been talking about this, this place of walking in the place of purity, walking in the place of righteousness, walking in the place of holiness, and walking in this place of the responsibility that I know that I have to be able to hear the word of the Lord and to be able to set myself in a place where my ears are constantly inclined to his voice. And in the place of his heart, where else could it be? right? Where else could it be? Well, I love this because normally this, this word is pronounced in Hebrew, uh, edut, edut. And when it talks about the place of, of these testimonies, and that word edut literally means testimonies. But in this case, there the vav that's, that's right after the, the aleph, dalit, vav, tav, yod, and kaf, sofit, there's a vav there. In this case, that vav is pronounced. It's not kept silent. Now, sometimes vav can be used as a, if you will, a vowel sound in, in Hebrew. But I love this because this is talking about his words and his testimonies. But by the, 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 the Hebrew perspective, the vav is pronounced. Why? Well, I'm going to teach you a really cool secret about the, the living letter vav that many don't know about, but it's one that to me makes absolute, I'm like, yes, Father, I now I even know more of, of what you have called each and every one of us to be. Now, we know of the fact that there are five sophites or finals in in the Hebrew language, and those five sophites or finals are the ones that are in the in the twenty seven Hebrew letters. There's twenty two original, and then the five sophites that were added by Ezra during the time of the Babylonian captivity, or right about the time of that. But the truth is, is there are more sophite letters than that, and vav is one of them. Vav is actually known as a yod sophite. Now, what is Yod? Yod is the smallest of all of the Hebrew le living letters. And every Hebrew living letter began with the living letter Yod. It's the dot. It's the little thing. It's the, the dot on the piece of paper. It means, it means to me, it means not just that place of creation. It means so much more. But for right now, I'm going to use that aspect of it in, in, a, in expressing this. But it's the all spark of creation. It's the very idea. It's the, it's the spark of a thought. Why have you ever wondered why there's always a light bulb above above many people's heads, if you will, in the in the metaphoric sense, where you know you see pictures and there's a light bulb because they've got an idea. 
it's the spark that that light bulb represents that spark of the idea and and it's the beginning of the the birth of something everything first begins with an idea everything that we do first begins in the place of of what the father gives us and and he shows us and it becomes a spark inside of our mind that we begin to to steward over we begin to work over especially if it's a especially if it's a, an idea like of of a of a business or something something like that but see it could be a, a an idea and a spark of of an understanding that leads me into that place of the trust and confidence in my father you see what i'm saying so that that all spark of creation is more than just that well vav is a yod sophie so what does that mean that means that that when father plucked out of his heart out of the intent of his heart the photon the the, the yod that he placed into the middle of creation. And by the power of his word and the wind of his breath, he spoke that little dot and it began to boom. It began to expand and it began to form everything in creation that we now see in the cosmos. That's how, that's how our, that's how we begin. Yes. I know it probably sounds like the big bang theory, but yes, this also is a very Hebraic uh, thought process. As a matter of fact, the Jews knew this even before science ever came out and said, and, and said, we believe that everything began with the Big Bang. There's not even a question anymore. It's, 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 a, it's a, a well-known, established scientific fact. Well, it's been in Scripture, in Torah, for thousands and thousands of years. And so everything that exists came from that one little tiny dot. But the process of the father removing the yod from his heart and placing it into the, the creation created the vav, because the yod or the vav is a yod that then begins to go down and it begins to touch into the earth. That's why vav is not is known as the heaven and earth connection. All right, because it, it goes into it goes down and connects to the earth itself. But remember, Vav is also the letter that represents us. And in this case, this Edvotecha is speaking about the place of not only his ennobling testimonies, because the Hebrew translation is here is your ennobling testimonies. So the Echa, the, the Cha on the end there, that is what makes it your. That's what's speaking of when it says, when it says your there. But the fact that they there's a vav that's used here, and I hope you guys can get this, because to me it it, it changes that ed, edut or ed, if you will, to adi, adi. In other words, uh, aleph. Excuse me, ayin dalit yod. Why am I saying that? If this if vav is a yod so feet then this begins to show a secret of what this is talking about. When I see that yod at the end of a Hebrew word, that yod of an Hebrew word changes the uh, possessive to my. Okay, so let me just make it pure and simple. And, and because this is not in the scripture itself, it's not something that you, this is where you have to know the secret here. And I'm giving you, I want to give you guys this secret. Because what it's saying is here is, yes, these are your ennobling testimonies. But when we speak that vav there in edvotecha, it changes it to the place where it's become my testimonies as well. The yod makes it possessive to me. Does that make sense? In other words, I, I'm not only taking your testimonies and your words and your commands as being yours, I'm making them mine too. Why? Because I love you. I want to be like you. I want to, I want to express this place of my love back to you. So your statutes become my statues and the expression of my love for you, just like your word has been an expression of your love for me. Does that make sense? So your ennobling to ennobling testimonies, your ennobling testimonies, as I make them my testimonies, my witnesses inside of my life, 
then it carries me to that place where I become the king and the priest that you have always intended to me. And I rejoice in these ways as much as in all riches. Matter of fact, I rejoice over these more than, than all the riches. Now, I'm not trying, the Father will bless us in all that we do. But what is my focus? Is my focus blessing? Or is my focus expressing to him the love that I have to him? I mean, I have to go, I have to go back to that place. Yes, I know I need money to be able to live and survive. We all do. But what is the the, the true focus of my heart? Is it is it to be blessed because I'm doing the right things? Or is it just to be in the place where, you know, when when that word sufficiency there, it, it, when, it, when it talks about the as uh, the riches there, it talks that actual Hebrew word there uh, speaks about that place. It's hone, uh, and and hone. One of the translations to that is sufficiency. I have everything that I need. Anyway, I could go into that in deep, but I know I realize I'm I'm running over a little bit today, and. Uh, but but that's okay because there was more here that I'd, I'd like to. This is more of a teaching today than it has been than it has been anything. But I'm, I'm I hope that you guys are beginning to see the heart behind what this bait's talking about. Of your precepts I speak and I look at your paths. I occupy myself with your statutes and I will not forget your word, Father. I thank you that you have you have brought us to the place of us of be of us being in your family. That that Father, we've always been that way. This is not something that 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 is any different other than the fact that we are all your children. Every single one of us are your children and you love us and you want in your your heart is to teach us and show us your paths, show us your ways, show us the place of of who we can really be. And in that place as we as we begin to see your word not as something that we have to do, but something that we want to do. Why? Because we love you just like I would do for my wife, just like I did for my parents when I was a kid. You know, I would want to give back to them. Why? Because I love them. You know, a matter of fact, it's funny because most of the time I always had to go to them and say, hey, mommy, daddy, can I borrow some money so I can go buy you a gift? You know, I had to get the money from them in order to be able to do that or then or then take that money, do something and buy something that I could make for them and give them that was really, truly an expression out of my own heart. But I still had to get the, the the finances from from them. How much? What what's what's different even in in the midst of all of this? You know, Father, I know that you have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And Father, that that I, I thank you that you've given us a place where we can begin to see the sufficiency of today. The sufficiency of the word that you want for us to do for today. I don't want to focus my heart on the on the future only and the place where I'm looking always out towards the, the future. Yes, there has to be a vision. There has to be a place that I know that you're carrying into. There's a place of expression into that place of, of guiding me towards a, a path and guiding me towards a place of, of completion and fullness or the place where you're taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory. And I thank you for that, that place because that's what stirs me and brings me along the path. But Father, I also thank you that I can ask you, what is your word for me to do today that will accomplish that goal? Don't let me worry about the things that I have to do for tomorrow. Let me get things done, the things that I need to do for today. And in that place, there's always sufficiency in everything that you've provided for me, for me to be able to do today. Because you've proven that to me over and over and over and over again. And so, Father, I rejoice in your word. I rejoice in this place as you begin to teach me who I am. And I can rule and reign right now as a king and a priest inside of your kingdom and not have to worry about looking at my checkbook. Because the truth is, is if, if I can look past a physical response and look into the treasuries of what I know that you've already given me, I, I have more than I could ever imagine. The question, the question isn't, where is the money coming from? The question is, Father, what is it that I need to do today? Because I know whatever I need to do it would be provided for and taken care of for today, period. And many times you take care of it before I even ask, before I even know. It's already there. It's already taken care of. So, Father, I thank you that we can rest in the place of the fullness of your shalom. 
that bait begins to show us this place of 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 the purity of our walk with you and that father you're calling us into this place of being holy as you are holy and i thank you for that in the name of yeshua amen